materials have gone from the status of great white hope for the future to major threat to life on the planet without going through the normal intermediate stages of being widely used for anything useful or giving rise to any actual problems. Many people, including Prince Charles, have been worried about the threat posed by nanotechnology. Should we be concerned? And what actually is nanotechnology? The simple definition of a nanomaterial is one which has at least one dimension that would be measured in nanometers. A nanometer is 1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, or 0.00000001 meters, so that's pretty small. We write it down at the atomic level here. The length of a soap molecule is about 20 nanometers. The wavelength of light is between 400 and 700 nanometers, so if you want to do your own experiment in nanotechnology, you only have to blow a soap bubble, which I will do. They're great. Um, the soap molecules will line up into a grid-like orientation which can reflect the different wavelengths of sunlight in different directions, giving the rainbow colours we've all seen when we've played with soap bubbles. Um, the complicated definition is given in the EU's handy guide SCS, sorry, SCCS 1484-12 Guidance on the Safety Assessment of Nanomaterials in Cosmetics published in 2012. Um, spoiler alert, I'm about to quote from it. A nanomaterial means an insoluble or biopersistent and intentionally manufactured material with one or more external dimensions or an internal structure on the scale of from 1 to 100 nanometers. So that clears that up. The interesting point is that the reference to intentionally manufactured is in there. There are already plenty of natural things that happen at the nanoscale. The concern is that materials on a nanoscale can behave differently to the same chemicals in bulk and that this might lead to harmful effects that have not yet been suspected. It's certainly true that molecules arranged differently on the nanoscale can show very different behaviour. The soap bubble example I've just uh, done is a perfect illustration. Bars of soap don't display rainbow colours but put the molecules that compose them into a very thin layer and another side of their personality that you don't normally see emerges. So it isn't fanciful to imagine that something unexpected might happen when new nanomaterials are created, and common cosmetic ingredients are sometimes just the things to illustrate this. Titanium dark side, in its normal pigment form, is usually used to make products look white, but Grind the particles down to a nanoscale and it can be used to reflect light very efficiently and so it becomes a very effective sunscreen. Its properties have changed so much that it's entirely possible that it might now pose new and previously unsuspected risks. But have any nanomaterials actually shown any harmful properties? There are some in areas not very closely related to cosmetics. Fullerenes are a very unusual form of carbon that has a nanoscale structure that in one study caused brain damage to earthworms. Heavy metals might penetrate the body more readily in nanoform, and this has been demonstrated in the cases of cadmium and gold, and so it probably applies to metals across the board. The harmful effects of asbestos, a naturally occurring mineral, might well be due to structures that occur on the nanoscale in it. But my soap bubble is only one of many examples of perfectly harmless examples of natural or accidentally produced nanotechnology. It's very hard to draw the conclusion there is anything about the nanoscale that makes it inherently more dangerous than any other. Nonetheless, the EU has decided that nanomaterials need to be highlighted on ingredient lists. It is now a legal requirement to put the word nano after the name of any nano ingredient. You'll probably see it most often on sunscreens containing titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. It might also pop up on some colour cosmetics as well. It will almost always be the case that nothing has actually changed. The ingredients designated as nano will be the same as they always have been. There won't be new forms of technology that have been recently developed. And no, at the moment, it's nothing to worry about. Thanks for listening. Thank <laughs> you.